That's good planning. Yeah. Thank you. We are Chiang Gang the, is a huge city. Across the bridge, we have to stop. This is a toll gate. One, one of the toll gate. Every time, uh, you know, to pay maybe five yuan, ten yuan to pass a bridge. So the, okay. Uh, uh, sometimes they call it the e, e pass or something like that. Easy pass. Yeah, drive through the restaurant. Only? Most, uh, this is only one of the few drive through we have in Tokyo. Yeah. It's kind of unusual. Well, usual, yeah. We have more regular restaurant for McDonald's. <laughs> but it was very popular. Yeah. Let's we also have sales tax. Oh, yeah. Depending VAT extra. is extra. Yeah. VAT 17% plus sales tax. Yeah. It's a huge city, Chongqing, 30 million population. And what I tried to show you from the car window as we passed on the way to the airport was the hundreds, maybe thousands of enormous buildings, which I assume are apartment buildings. So uh, traffic also is, okay, I give up. So traffic also, if course is horrendous. We got a little look around at um, Chongqing when we came in but uh, this time we're going right to the airport which I'm in now and heading back to Beijing for a couple of days. That's a Houston Rocket basketball player. Yao Ming. Yao Ming, yeah I saw that. But now he owns the Shanghai Shark. Does he really? He's the owner. Or a owner. Chongqing Airport. We're in Beijing Airport. A remarkable building seen through the mist. It's a hotel, this building here. On this somewhat long so this boulevard, I'm rather afraid we're going to walk to the end of it. It's really a long way to that far end, so I'm not going to go all the way. Because you have to wear all, wear okay. all the way to the end and then back again. But what we're looking at is that bird's nest designed by Ai Weiwei, we, we, I don't know, the famous Chinese artist who was much admired. It's called the bird's nest, as you probably know, and it has a stadium inside it. It's a funny thing how there's a tendency never to take you really very near anything. There's always a walk and um, I don't know why it's necessary. I mean maybe they feel that people ought to have to walk a bit. I'm trying to get a bit more light. There's a lot of haze, uh, the fog, the mist, the pollution that's um, well known about. Um, I'm looking at myself rather than the lens. Um, the uh, the fog that's well known about uh, about Beijing it's not that bad but it's enough to create a kind of thin curtain over almost everything that you try to do but um, the the uh, the van the bus almost everything leaves people off this quarter of a mile away from the what they're actually going to see so you not only have to walk to it but you have to walk back from it which, uh, I don't know, it must be intentional, obviously, but I don't really know why it is. So that's the closest you're going to get, folks, to the bird's nest. I read a story in the paper this morning about a truck that was stopped in Guan, Guanzhou, Dong province, and it had... Uh, 
900 dogs aboard and they were smuggling them on their way to uh, a place where they were going to kill them and sell them for dog meat. Apparently there's been a lot of that going on lately. Of course there are pandas. Always pandas. But surely there would be pictures of the bird's nest here at this store nearby, but no, none of it. Actually, people are carrying pictures of people at with the bird's nest behind them, so apparently you can go and have your picture taken in front of it. This is what the bird's nest actually looks like on a postcard and what you would see if I'd walked another two or three hundred yards. I bought these postcards for a couple of bucks. Green mailboxes. China Post. Rose Duck Restaurant. Trying to get rid of hutongs now. They're those kind of old courtyard places. Very old, very narrow little alleyways all sort of leading into each other and so on. They pulled most of them down, but I actually, last time I was in Beijing, I went and looked around one. Camel, whatever that is. The China Railway Group. Quite often these things painted on walls are not actually on the wall, they're on a cloth that's fixed to the wall. I don't know if that's the case with this one, but it is with a lot of others. Oh, that's a Catholic church and not a town hall as I had imagined. Certainly are a lot of magazines in Beijing. <laughs> to green and then probably to blue if we wait long enough. The green's fading and up comes blue. I don't know what it is but it's a nice building. Here's the church and the Sunwall Dynasty Hotel right next to it. This building that I showed you was changing colour. This is the side of it and it turns out to be Emporio Armani. It might be China, but there sure are a lot of foreign names. Gucci. iPad. Minolta. Swiss watches. Some blue trees coming up. So there's a whole row of blue trees. Here's a 700 year old water well. <laughs> I don't think it's used anymore. Next to the Bank of China is the Gap. Ah, oh, food anywhere is a big draw on the screen. Here's a big building. So huge, unless I walk across the street, I can't get it in the camera all in one shot. Of course, it's the main promenading street. There are seats every now and then. You can sit down, but mostly people just walk and walk. And all the famous stores are here. That's Ray from our, from our tour, and the other guy is our guide for this town, for Beijing. There were only five of us in our little rich group.
is the entrance to the night market into which hopefully we're going to go. Chestnuts, some kind of lollipops. So this is kebab. Busy day coming all the way from Chongqing and tonight uh, walking around the uh, main street in Beijing where all the famous foreign brands are and the night market but then my um, battery wore down before I was able to finish that I did a bit on the other camera and um, I'm recharging the camera now and hoping tomorrow when we go visit the Great Wall everything will be cool